While we're daydreaming about fighting the good fight and traveling between the stars themselves, it might be good to realize that we're going to get this far only if the aliens let us live long enough in the first place. And what is the standing order for humans from your imperious leader? Extermination. By now, we've seen enough invasions to know what to expect. Disintegration beams, heat rays, and generic bright flashing lasers. Compared with the weapons that we would have to defend ourselves with, in such an invasion, we might be worried that it wouldn't have much of a chance. But if you think about it, it's not going to be as bad as all that. If the aliens know anything about proper physics, it's going to be a whole lot worse. Any alien smart enough to even get here will of course know what Hollywood does not. It's a huge waste of your invasion if your weapon can only kill one person at a time. If you want real extermination, we already know that you don't need the empty flash of fictitious weapons. All you need is the simple physics of kinetic energy. But where does kinetic energy get its power from? You don't need a war machine. All you need is potential. Potential energy might be the simplest physics concept, especially in its most elementary form, mass times gravity times height. And the key word here is gravity. Free gravity. Gravity is everywhere, generated by anything at all in the universe that has mass. To a science fiction extreme, it's dangerous in the form of black holes that have so much of it that nothing we know can escape, and anything that gets too close is crushed. But it can't be too dangerous, because we have it right here on Earth. Gravity is measured by how fast it pulls down. Here on Earth, anything that's pushed, falls, or simply dropped has an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second pulling down. That is free energy. Increasing energy. Gravity pulls down second after second, which means your speed is going up each and every second. And you've never needed a spaceship to see that. We certainly know how to borrow the free energy of gravity for our own war making. But what about the wars of outer space? If you have a spaceship, why bother leaving it? Just stay in orbit and blast the planet from above. After all, by pulling down, gravity's on your side. Certainly, speed up the entire invasion process. 30% of the planetary crust destroyed on opening volley. But even then, we're still stuck with the same derivative weapons. How do you conquer the most planet in the least time? You need time, Picard of the Enterprise. We will save you time. We will eradicate the human infestation. What is the ultimate weapon of mass destruction? Disintegration? Too slow. Heat rays? Too corny. War machines? Too fragile. Lasers, too random. Gravity's free, remember? Get in your spaceship, fly into space, find the biggest rock you can, get way above the Earth, and just drop it! Remember, gravity is a continuous pull, increasing your speed towards the planet second after second. A fact intimately obvious to any alien above the planet with a mind for extermination. Now they'll have their laser energy, their plasma energy, but what they're really going to notice is how many physics equations have nothing more complicated than simple mass. Be it even a simple asteroid, it has its own energy. Mass times gravity times height is potential energy. It's totally free and quite deadly. Why would something so simplistically banal be superior to the $14 billion killer death ray? Well, if one thing, it's certainly cheaper. But what, if anything, could stop it? Think about it in terms of the laws of motion. Suppose a big rock is coming right at us. What are we going to do? Blast it? The conservation of mass. Instead of one asteroid, now you have 5,000. And they're still coming. And then there's Newton. A moving object stays moving. 
and it doesn't matter if it's in one piece or 500. It's still coming. So go ahead, blast that asteroid. All you're going to do is give it more targets. Now how much power are we talking about? Surely a rock flying through space could never equal the sheer destructive might of a computer generated eye candy popcorn movie death ray. Well, what's the most powerful weapon that we've got? The nuclear bomb. The formula for the nuclear bomb isn't all that complicated. It's just E is equal to MC squared. That's mass times the speed of light squared. Now when you get right down to it, that's just mass times velocity, similar to momentum, similar to kinetic energy, except that the velocity is the ultimate velocity, the fastest speed possible in our universe. Now no one will ever be able to push a rock as fast as that, but they don't have to. Gravity is accelerating it each and every second. And even if our velocity is always thousands of times smaller, the rock can be as big as we want. Millions of times bigger. Same difference. The bugs send another meteor our way. But this time, we're ready. Planetary defenses are better than ever. Now gravity isn't meant to be scary. Used safely in a delicate balance that keeps our starships in orbit and ourselves comfy on a planet. It's just prudent to realize what would happen if an enemy decided that they did not want to fight fair. They may not offer you a target. They can obliterate you from orbit. You will die. Never having seen the faces of your killers. And here we have Hollywood to thank, yet again, for filling our heads full of scientific illiteracy. For despite the popcorn mush they've sold us, any alien invasion would most certainly be unfair. Physics is without emotion, without compassion, without bias. If it has any care at all about warfare, it says that the person who invents the unfair physics first wins. But we can play that game too. What is it you want us to do? Even if our Hollywood fairy tale of a heroic humanity in a victorious battle against implacable evil really is so much Hollywood flim flam, when it comes to aliens, we still know exactly who we're dealing with. We always know what they're up to, and we always know what to do about it. Because they are not going to stop until we build our own ships, blast off into space, and take the fight to them. There, we'll have our own unfair physics that we will have built with our own two hands. That we can do. And will. Because if you're going to play this game, you better play to win. Let's see, lasers. Ah! <laughs>